Rose Katz is in her first year at Emory and Henry. I talked with the head women's basketball coach on Thursday. We talked about the season as a whole and much, much more, including this weekend. They get the Lynchburg schools on Friday night. They have Lynchburg College on Saturday. They have Randolph. Coach Katz started off by talking about this weekend. Um, well, for us, uh, this weekend's obviously a, a big weekend for us. Uh, playing at home, you know, you got to handle your business at home. Um, so we're excited to be back here after uh, a long road trip last weekend and, um, you know, play in front of our fans and in front of our family. And, um, you know, we're very comfortable here. So uh, that's definitely hopefully going to be a big plus for us. Season as a whole, um, you know, we're playing with a lot of freshmen right now. Uh, they're trying to get to know me, the entire team, and, you know, I'm trying to get to know them. Um, so we're just looking to gel here a little bit, and it's been happening in streaks, but I'd like to see it happen a little bit more consistently. What made the uh, Emory and Henry job an attractive job for you? Um, well, I, I always wanted to coach uh, Division III. Um, I played Division Three, and I just had such a tremendous experience um, when I was playing my college basketball. Um, I always actually knew I wanted to coach. I've been coaching since I was a senior in high school. I, I started my own AAU team. And um, so I was coaching all through college, actually. And um, I just had such a great experience at the sales and playing Division III um, that I kind of wanted to create that for other people and have them experience what I did in college and have that um, memory to look back on, I guess. And, um, you know, it's a tough conference. It's a great conference. And um, coming from the Middle Atlantic Conference, which is also another tough conference for Division III, um, you know, just being a part of this conference is really appealing to me. Yeah, you know, you hit on one thing right there, that the ODAC is such a tough conference, and I think a lot of people, when they're trying to get better, it's tough for them when the upper teams are also getting better at the same time. How tough right. does that make your job? Um, well, I mean, it makes my job tough, but you know what? I'm a very, very competitive person, and, um, you know, there's no mountain I don't think I can climb. Um, so, you know, I'm ready to just dig in and work hard, just like I expect my kids to do every day. I'm going to put in just as much time and just as much effort as I expect out of them um, to build this program and, and to make it, you know, a, tr a tradition of success, much like many of the teams in the ODAC have. And much like my college has, you know, um, I got the job down here, and I heard from alumni at the sales that I never even played with congratulating me. I wanted to be that kind of family atmosphere where, you know, tradition doesn't graduate. You know what I mean? It, it just gets passed down from class to class to class, and the expectations of success also get passed down as well. Talk about some of the key players that have made you guys go so far this year. Um, well, you know, uh, a lot of freshmen, um, uh, you know, but Ashlyn Baird, our senior, uh, she's been playing great for us. Um, and Faith Walker, another senior, has improved tremendously. And they've both bought into, um, you know, what I've been trying to sell to the team. Um, and I think that they've become a lot better players uh, because of that. And then also um, Carlita Ham, Michelle Williams, and Christy Langley, um, and Valerie Beal, uh, four freshmen that are starting. And um, just getting it done, and, you know, I kind of threw them into the deep end and told them sink or swim, and um, they're swimming a lot more than they were in the beginning. Uh, and, and they're starting to get it and starting to work together. So, um They've, they've pretty much been our biggest contributors so far. You know, I asked several coaches this question when I talked to them. When you get a job and, you know, obviously juniors, seniors, sophomores have been there before you, you didn't recruit them, how do you make it feel, how do you make them feel like, you know, they're your players too even though they weren't brought in by you, if you get what I'm saying? Um, you know what, I just try and create the, the family atmosphere, you know what I mean? I try and um, get to know them outside of basketball, get to know what they like, what they do. Uh, you know, we have a big Duke UNC war on our team that that's going on. Um, so I try and get to know them as people, and um, you know what I mean. And and also have them get to know me and and my background. And um, you know, I feel like if you have that open lines of communication and kind, of, you know what I mean. I try and goof around with them when I think it's appropriate, and so kind of let my personality shine through so they can do the same thing. And I feel like that kind of creates that respect factor from player to coach, no matter if I brought them in or, or I didn't bring them in. So um, that's kind of what I try and do to kind of build that, that bridge between us.
Talk a little bit about the ODAC as a whole, some teams and players that maybe you've been impressed with that you've seen so far. Oof, um, I was very impressed with, um, I believe her name's Sarah Sape. Or right. I'm not sure how to say her last name from Virginia Wesleyan. Um, and uh, number 44 on Randolph Macon is also a freshman that I was really, really impressed with. Um, and then, obviously, um, Jasmine Green from Hollins. I mean, she's just an unbelievable athlete. Um, and Gabby Hoglesby from Guilford. I mean, she just gets it done, and she's a workhorse. Um, so those are the couple that I've been uh, extremely, extremely impressed with so far. Lynchburg and Randolph this weekend, what worries you about each? Uh, Lynchburg, um, the, just their scrappiness and, and their hustle, um, and they, um, they look to go in transition a lot, which kind of concerns me, us getting back on defense and, uh, kind of digging in and, and getting it done, and they set a lot of ball screens, so, um, we're going to have to be really active defensively with them, um, and with Randolph, kind of the same thing, you know, just us executing, more or less is, is what I'm concerned about, you know, us being able to, to work the clock and get good shots and, and to execute within offense and play within ourselves. Um, you know, we did that better against Guilford. That's why the score wasn't as bad, as, I guess, as it could have been. Um, you know, we continued to execute and be patient and hustle. And, you know, that's my biggest expectation of my team is that we're never going to give up if we're going to scratch and call, you know what I mean, until the game's over. Um, and, and Lynchburg and Randolph are very similar teams um, to us in terms of, you know what I mean, they don't give up on the play. And, um, you know, when when – Lynchburg got down against Roanoke um, they, in the first half. They didn't give up in the second half, and, and they executed and, and played a lot better. So, um, you know, that's definitely something that, that we're concerned about, and um, hopefully we'll get some good games this weekend. Rose Cat's looking to get her first ODAC win this weekend. It could come against Lynchburg. It could come against Randolph. It could come against both or Emory and Henry could still be looking after this week. We'll follow Emory and Henry and continue to follow the ODAC here on the Sports Buffet Podcast. But for now, Bob Alvis.